How many people uh, throughout his career did he interview uh, that claimed to be abductees? And, uh, in your we, mind, which which ones are the most incredible? Oh, well, he interviewed several hundred. I'll tell you this, that John Mack's first book, Abduction, Human Encounters with Aliens, which came out in 1994, which got him into trouble at Harvard. And I can tell you that story. But uh, uh, that book uh, is really is a compendium of 13 case studies. OK, 13 people um, who had these stories of encounters with aliens. Um, and they are fantastic. I mean, they are so amazing, uh, more complicated and more uh, with more twists and turns than you could ever imagine. Very well recounted by, by John Mack, li li just like a psychiatrist would, who whose business is, you know, recounting uh, case histories. He talks about their childhood background, you know, all the, ev the events in their lives that led up to this. So in other words, he, he dissects their stories. And then he tells their stories, uh, the stories that they told him uh, with his insights. Um, and uh, it, it's really a, a totally remarkable book because um, each of these stories is, is different. This is what actually was so convincing to him. The stories are all different in myriad details, but they're basically consistent. That they see a spacecraft somewhere, that they next remember seeing alien creatures of different kinds, uh, they are then on, on the ship subject to various procedures uh, and that they are then released. Sometimes they have a scar afterwards of some procedure that healed quickly. They don't remember having, the, you know, where the scar came from. Some people felt that they had implants put into their body so they could be tracked later. So in other words, the the stories were basically consistent because they had a lot of common elements, but they were different in thousands of little details. So it's not like they all agreed on, we're gonna all tell this one story. This is the story. It wasn't like that. Some people um, uh, had minimal or no contact with, with spaceships. Uh, they just encountered beings. Um, as I said, a lot of variation and details you, you would think to yourself, and John Mack certainly thought, you couldn't make this stuff up. Besides which, the people who told him these stories, and this was another factor that influenced him into, into believing that they, on some level they were telling the truth. In recounting the stories, they went through all the, the trauma of the experience. They wept, they cried, they screamed, they cursed, they thrashed about. Um, and he said, they couldn't be making this up. I mean, people fabricating a story are not that good actors that they can um, you know, um, convey this level of fear and, and disgust and you know, all the emotions they had anyway. Um, so these 13 cases, um, in the book, each one is different. Each one is is amazing. Um, I mean, if I had to think of some of the stories, I, I see. I interviewed uh, in quite a number of of John Max people afterwards. The the, uh, the people in the book are given pseudonyms to protect their identity. But all some of them? of them, all the thirteen, I believe, none of them identified by their real names uh, at their at their request, but. Some of them came out afterwards, pretty some pretty quickly afterwards, because they appeared with John Mack under their real names. Um, so uh, quite a number of them uh, identified themselves afterwards as as the sub, uh, the, you know, the person in the story. Um, and others I was able to identify and talk to them, and they confirmed their identities. Um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of you know. Uh, um, um, there was one one guy. Um, he, he's called Scott in the book. His real name is Randy. Uh, he ended up later uh, making a, a film documentary of an encounter 
uh, of an incident at uh, a school in, in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe uh, Southern Africa, where a, a ship, the children reported a ship landing and aliens emerging from the ship and the, the children in, uh, interacting with these two beings. Well, I'll tell you that story later, but anyway, so uh, Randy Nickerson, um, who, made, who later made that documentary, uh, was one of the first people Mac uh, interviewed. His story's told in the book, and he, um, you know, remembered being um, playing in the backyard and and seeing these big ants. He called them, um, and um, uh, and then they put something in his uh, in his head in his brain, and he passed out. Uh, kind of, they had a, kind of a wand which you hear in other stories. Um, and, um, um, you know, and many details, but- um, This was in Zimbabwe? No. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. He, he made a documentary later about an incident in Zimbabwe. We'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, this is when he was a child and he was talking to John Mack. He was one of John Mack's first, um, subjects of patients, nobody could ever figure out whether John Mack was talking to them as, uh, as patients because they weren't suffering from anything except their experiences. They, they weren't like, uh, they didn't have a real, they didn't have <laughs> a real reason to be a patient except for these stories. Uh, so they, uh, they, they didn't wanna call them patients. Um, so subjects suggest that they were research subjects for John Mack. Anyway, we could just call them people who came to John Mack, but Randy was one of them. Okay. And Randy found a specific interest in the, the Zimbabwe. Well, th the reason I ask is because some of these experiences or some of these, uh, you know, abduction experiences that people talk to him about have more concrete evidence than others. If, if it comes to physical scars or if it comes to actual eyewitnesses, yeah. Um, in your mind, which ones, which accounts are the most credible? Okay, so here's a case that um, became very famous in its own right, um, and uh, that Bud Hopkins investigated and told John Mack about, um, and, and it was actually a book by, by Bud Hopkins called Witnessed, and uh, this is a story. Um, um, two security guards, they call themselves police officers, but let's say security guards uh, were escorting a VIP uh, in, in downtown Manhattan uh, in November 89, I believe. And uh, the car suddenly came to a stop and the security guards got out and they saw a spacecraft approaching an 11 story building near the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, they saw a, a woman, a figure of a woman, um, fly out of the window, surrounded by three alien creatures, all flying in the sky. They escorted her into the spaceship and it flew off and plunged into the East River, okay? So, um, um, you know, telling this story, I, 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 it's very difficult to tell the story without the, all the background or nuances, but this, this is a case that, as I say, became known as the Brooklyn Bridge abduction. Um, and, and John Mack spent a lot of time on it uh, and uh, because he was so intrigued by it. It wasn't his case, it was Bud Hopkins' case. Anyway, the woman uh, later came forward uh, herself and, con and con contacted Bud Hopkins, which is really how, how the story started. And, um, and Bud Hopkins found some witnesses who said they, they, they were stuck on the Brooklyn Bridge when all traffic came to a stop, uh, the power went out, uh, they saw this woman, you know, flying out of the window into the spacecraft. And um, um, anyway, um, and I tell the story in my book, really, I go over the story. And the, the thing is, 
the story was was uh, told to Bud Hopkins by the woman who said she was the the target of the abduction, and uh, and and it was also told by by these two security guards who said they witnessed it, who were driving down in Lower Manhattan and whose car was stopped, and they sent Bud Hopkins a bunch of uh, messages and letters and tapes, uh, but. The bottom line is that Bud Hopkins was never able to identify the two of them. Um, they, they, um, he, 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 he got their names, uh, but he, he never could find them. And because he never could find them, and this is, the, this is the problem so often in these stories, and this is why we've been so meticulous at the New York Times, in sticking it to things that we can confirm with named sources. This is a case, the perfect you know, example, um, that without the, uh, the name, the, without knowing who these two uh, witnesses were or, or having them face to face telling their stories, um, the story became impossible to verify. The woman said, yeah, I was the one I was abducted. Um, and people said, or some people said, yeah, they saw this woman come out of the window. But uh, the two security guards who were the best witness who came from, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the closest witnesses, shall we say to this, could never be identified. And in fact, took some effort to remain unidentified. So the story basically collapsed. Um, it's intriguing, but it, it, like so many of the abduction stories, there's something missing. That is the, the hallmark of this phenomenon, Danny, is that none of them uh, can produce the smoking gun that would convert uh, skeptics, um, scientists, etc. It That's not an accident. That is part of the phenomenon. Somehow this whatever this is, doesn't want to be found out or can't be found out. Uh, there's a lot of intriguing signs pointing to these cases. And as I said, there's fragmentary evidence, all of which convinced John Mack that there was something to this, you know, the affinity with UFOs outside the window, the broken tree branches, the third party witnesses, the young children, the the um, emotion that the people had when they recounted all these things, the, the, the scars afterwards, all these little bits of evidence pointed to something, to the reality of these events. And yet there was something of course missing, which is the absolute confirmation that they occurred in reality. There's right. no photographs, there's no video, there's no, and you know, you say, well, why isn't there? Well, that's a good question. Why isn't there? There is video, by the way, of UFOs because they came out that we saw the Navy videos. There's definitely a photographic and video evidence confirming the physical existence of these objects. But that's all you can say. There's no connection to aliens or abduction or any, anything else. Uh, it, that, that, we don't know. It doesn't exist. We don't have that. So all we can say is that, yeah, UFOs physically exist. We don't know where they come from. We don't know what intelligence is, is behind the wheel. Uh, um, as far as alien abduction, we know people have told stories. We have some fragmentary confirmation in different pieces, but nothing like the Navy videos of right. UFOs. So that's the leap. And that's why at the New York Times, we haven't reported on alien abduction. We've reported on UFOs. Whoa.